Well, welcome everybody to the first of our live testimonies. Uh, I'm talking with Jay. Uh, Jay's been at our church for a while now. Um, he's been many things in life. Uh, boxer, bodyguard, enforcer. Uh, not many people would look at him and say, that looks like a Christian. But he is a passionate lover of Jesus with all of his heart. So how did that uh, start, Jay? Because you weren't brought up as a Christian, were you? No, no. Um, um, first of all, I just, I just want to say it's a testimony about, about God's awesome power and grace. It's, um, it's, it's no, no glory to me, all glory goes to God. How, how he, 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 chases it, he chases after you sometimes and just keeps prodding you. And I always knew, I always knew God was real. It was, it was, it was just a time that I accept it. Um, my life started out, um, is that the question you asked, Pastor? My life started out is, um, um, I, I grew up in an aggressive background, um, but I loved school. Absolutely loved going to school. It was an escape from um, an aggressive life, growing up with an aggressive dad. Um, my first, meeting with Jesus I'd say was um at the teacher school now Mrs. Alden. Um she was a pastor's wife of a church near to us called Eve Lane. Um she was my first introduction really to Jesus. I I know in my heart she always prayed for all of us rough kids from the rough estate. Um so you know Life wasn't too good as a child, but I absolutely loved school. Pastor, I absolutely loved it. Yeah, if, obviously, though, you kind of grew up a little bit, and uh, you got into some stuff that perhaps you shouldn't have done. How did that all that start, really? Uh, is at the age of 15, leaving school. Um, I got picked on a bit at school because I loved school. I was a little bit shy because of the way my dad used to hurt me as a child. Um, so I went boxing. I had a, an uncle who had a boxing club, so I went boxing. Um, and that's basically when the, all the mess started to happen. Because I found out I could look after myself with my hands. Um, yeah, that's, that's when things started to go quite wrong, to be honest, at the age of 15. So where did that kind of leave you? What, what sort of company were you keeping and where did that take you? Um, but, but at the age of about 16, I had another meeting with a Christian person, a guy named Stephen Rooms, who's been a Christian all his life and still today, one of my best friends and brothers in Christ. Um, and he prayed for me when I was, I was about 16. I was into trouble, I was messing about, but... I had a, a daily nine to five job in a foundry. I worked with Stephen and he prayed for me. So this is like the second time that I, I'd been introduced to Jesus, but I didn't take it. So by the age of 17, I was, I was in prison. I was in prison, I think it was for theft of motor vehicles and, and just fighting and arguing and my whole life started to tumble out of control. Even now, through Mrs. Alden and Stephen, I knew that Jesus was real, but I was, I was rebelling. I was rebelling, so by the age of 17, I was in prison, um, serving time, and getting in with the wrong crowd, and thinking, being the big, the big guy, the guy who could use his fist was the way forward. Um, in prison, you learn to fight, you learn to look after yourself, you learn to be mentally strong. But it's all the wrong way. You're learning the wrong things, really. You learn the right things, but learning the wrong way, if I could say that. Um, I went to prison in total probably four, four things, four, four, four times for silly things like fines and you know, the little crimes I've theft of my but on the, the fifth time I got sent to prison for, I got arrested for attempted murder. I actually went to prison in the end for assault. I was remanded in prison for quite a long time. 
for um, the, the use of, of, of weapons in an assault. I'm not proud of it, but I really want to emphasise here that Jesus can save anybody. If you save me, being sent to prison for attempted, being arrested for attempted murder, and following me to prison for assault, um, Jesus is there for everybody. I really want to encourage you with that. Um, this took me to probably the age of 23, 24, where I, I'm being released from prison. I, I started to get involved in organised crime because I was a good fighter. I'm a big lad. And organised criminals look for people like me to to pair with themselves, to to look after them, to be an enforcer, to to use violence to get their own way. So this probably took me up to um, probably thirty. Before that, I hurt a lot of people and. It, I've had a few chances to meet them people again and, and actually say sorry to them, which is very, very difficult. And anybody I've ever heard, anybody ever watches this video I've ever heard, I am truly, truly sorry with all my heart that I ever did anything wrong to you. But yeah, I've mixed up in serious crime, organised crime, because I couldn't look after myself, because I could use my hands. So obviously that led you on to a bit of a career in security and bodyguarding and a lot of other things as well. Um, tell us about what happened that night in Birmingham uh, when really everything started to kick off. Um, I would have been about, I would have been about 40ish by then. Um, I wasn't meant to go to work. Something happened that I had to go is um, a JLS concert. I went to work. Um, I, it just it just all crazy. It just happened so quickly that um, there's a big rush when JLS went to play the first song. We expected ten thousand people, twenty five thousand people turned up. There is a video I've passed on to Pastor Steve, which. I suppose in my could view in time. Um, it was a big rush. Fences came over. It, the screams and the noise was, can I say, hellish. It was, it was just, it was just frightening to hear so many kids all screaming at the same time. Obviously, the band stopped. I went to where, to where I think I thought everything was happening, which it was, and uh, there was a little girl crushed. I ran to help her, dragged her out. Um, which I probably shouldn't, shouldn't have done, but I did. I don't know why. Well, I, knew, I know why now, but I didn't know why at the time. Um, I dragged this little girl out, and if you can imagine, you know, a 14 year old girl in your arms, no life. The police had said she was a goner. Um, I ran with her all, of all places to a hot dog stand to get her some water. Um, got water, kind of brought her hand and took her to an ambulance. Um, this is the part where it gets it gets crazy. What happened um, on the way home? I was meant to be some hard man. I've never cried. I've never really got upset. I was locked in my childhood. Um, I couldn't stop crying. I could not stop crying. Um, I drove past the church, which is my old church in Dudley, and they used to have a little cross on the front. And this is the time I truly believe I was saved. This was probably at the age of 40. I looked at the cross and I just said to myself, as clear as I'm saying now, all my life, God's real. So yeah, after saving somebody's life, this little girl who we now love with and sits down and got found to her two children, she's now in her 20s. Um, I started to finally accept that Jesus is real, that God is real, that he saves, changes lives. I finally started to accept it. And like I said, I really want to emphasize the meeting of my school teacher, 
at a very early age. The meet of Stephen Roos, 16, 17. At the age of 30, I met another guy called Gordon, who's now in the same church as me, who prayed for me too. And at the age of 40, I finally accept that God's real and Jesus is my saviour. But I still fought against it. It was still a, a couple of years later that I actually was saved. Um, so I had the madness of, of a little girl being crushed and me going to the ambulance and coming home and sitting down and crying and my wife questioning me saying, you know, what my wife, who is now my wife, she was my girlfriend at that time, um, saying to me, um, what's the matter you? you don't cry, you know, why are you crying? And I basically was saying to her, I don't know, I don't know what's the matter with me. And I put this down to the, the, the power of Jesus. When you actually finally realise who Jesus is, it's just something, it, it, the emotion just pours out here yeah, and it's uncontrollable. I think that's why we see so many people in churches cry. Because we can't understand, as humans, the immense power and what Jesus can bring, who Jesus is. I don't think we realise it, but when we actually accept it, that's what happened that day in Birmingham. Um, so we worked for a group called JLS, and there's a big crush, same little girl's life, and that was when G well, I finally accepted that Jesus was real. Yeah, that's good. What we'll do is we'll post the video from uh, Midlands today. Jay sent it me. So after the video that you've watched, uh, you can click on that and see the real footage. Um, very emotional time. Some people would say maybe your just head was a bit mixed up, but God keep knocking your heart's door, didn't he? And then finally, yeah. what brought you to church, Jay? Uh, what brought me to church? Crazy. Oh, oh my life. Um, I was a boxer at the time. I was still fighting at the age of 40. Um, in the school holidays, somebody from Dudley Church put a, a letter for a leaflet for the door, because we, we live right by the church, right next to it, um, saying there was a, a club called Bananas Club for children. Um, we had our mayor at the time, May would have been about, uh, May would have been about uh, seven, seven, about seven years old. And she saw the, the, the leaflet, she said, can I go, can I go, can I go? And me, even though I knew now that Jesus was real, I was being kind of selfish, and I said, yes, you can, because it, mean, it meant I could go to the gym instead of looking after So I, I took her to the church on the first day. Um, I was just, it just blew me away, because I'm a big guy, I had the best of a pair of shorts, so I'm still going to the gym. And not one person took any notice of me. They wasn't scared of me. They didn't look at my muscles. All I was interested in was Elmia, of getting it signed up, getting it signed. We had to sign a lot of things because of kids being left there. Um, it just really blew me away that nobody never took any notice of the size of me. Nobody was scared of me. Nobody really pushed me away. Um, I took her every day. Monday to Friday. On the Friday, they asked me, um, would you like to come Sunday? Um, bring me up and she'll get a prize for coming every day. I said, yeah, yeah, of course. And I'm here, I said, oh, can I go, can I go, can I go? I said, yeah, of course you can. So I went on the Sunday. Um, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I absolutely loved it, you know. I couldn't believe it. Too. All that time, I'd, I, I, I've seen people enjoying themselves on drugs and everything else, and I could enjoy myself to that extent without drugs, just through Jesus. It was just, it was just crazy. I, 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 at one time, I was looking around the church thinking, wow, I know people who paid 20 quid for this, and everybody is enjoying themselves for nothing, for, you know, following Jesus, you know. Um, 
I, when we left the church, I said to Liam, my wife, who, who'd been brought, who's been brought up in church, um, I'm going back next week. And my wife said, yeah, okay, whatever. No way for you. So I'm going back next week. And the week after I go up and started getting ready on Sunday morning, and Leah said to me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to church. And they said, okay, I'll come with you. I'll just support you. After a long conversation. Um, so I went. Um, a few weeks later, I got saved. I asked somebody to pray with me uh, uh, so I could accept Jesus into my life. So please, please, as you listen to this, this testimony, remember at the age of about 10, somebody told me about Jesus. I didn't listen. At the age of 17, somebody told me about Jesus. I still didn't listen. But Jesus never gave up. Age of 30, somebody told me about Jesus. I didn't listen. Age of 40, I saved the little girl's life. Jesus come to me himself. You know, I, I can't even tell you what happened that day and what it was like driving past a cross and look at the cross in the church about 11 o'clock at night and saying, oh my life, God's real. And I still didn't listen. And also, my heart is to help children and to help and encourage adults to know Jesus and to worship on the worship music. Those are three things on my heart. And God knew, God knew, God knows. He knows us, He made us, has a time for us. And He knew I, I, I'll never turn my back on Amia, you know, I'll never turn my back on kids, I'll, I'll always help a child, you know, and saving a little girl's life as well. So I got saved because of a club called Bananas Club, a kids club in the holidays, after all the crazy stuff of being enforcer for organised gangs and being involved with crazy stuff, going to prison, saving somebody's life, I actually got saved through a kids club in the kids holidays. Don't never underestimate how Jesus can come to you. Never. Never, 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 never. Like I said, I, I, all those big, crazy, mad things I did mm. in the kids club. It was a kids club club, but not this club. <laughs> That's good, Jay. Uh, what we're going to say is, um, if you want to talk to Jay personally, will you message Church Facebook? Um, we've got lots of guys at church who've got similar backgrounds to Jay. Uh, none of us are perfect, not by a million miles, uh, but we've all come to know Jesus as our Lord and our Saviour. He's brought a peace into our hearts that nobody else can give. And uh, we want these real life stories to really mean something. Um, I know Jay is one of the nicest, gentlest guys you'll ever wish to meet. Um, and all that stuff, he still he still does bodyguarding work. Um, you were the Spice Girls the other week, weren't you? And other stuff, you know, yeah. still, still in the trade. But God is using him to speak to real men so and women as well. So if you want to have a chat with him or you want to put us a comment upon Facebook, that will be brilliant. And uh, what we'll do is pop that other video down there of Midlands today. But God bless you for now. Uh, Jay, would you just pray with the guys if they want to know Jesus? Would you do that for us? Yeah, I, I just want to say that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Yeah. Pastor Shirley, I love you. I miss you. I don't know you. Um, oh, Father God in heaven, I love be your name. Father, let his testimony touch hearts. Father, help him to understand this about you. I'm just a tool. I'm just a tool in the toolbox. Father, I thank you for coming into my life. I thank you for coming into my family's life. I thank you for Amir. I thank you for my wife, Leah, who's so humble and so beautiful. Who helped me to find you. Father, I thank you for my old school teacher, Mrs. Alden. I thank you for Gordon. I thank you for Stephen. I thank you for my pastor, Steve. I thank you for my old pastor, Joe. Father, I thank you for all these people. Father, I just ask you, if, if there's anybody out there watching this testimony, that you'll touch their hearts and give them the urge, that prod to get in touch with Pastor Steve or get in touch with me or get in touch with anybody else and I was a Christian and ask them how. How, how do I get to know Jesus? 
Ask that question. Be brave. How do I get to know Jesus? Father, I'll just thank you. I'll just, it's just simply, I'll just thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jay. We, we're all locked down, but as we keep saying, we're not locked in. God's using us to speak, and thank you for your word and your testimony, and we'll speak soon. God bless you, mate. Thank you. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you.